Hello guys and welcome to another video. As the title suggests, this video is all about camping and photography. In about a week to a week and a half's time, I've decided that I'm gonna do a wild camp. And hopefully this video will give you an idea as to all the different types of equipment I'm gonna be taking both for camping and for photography purposes. Before we get a start on all the equipment here, let's have a quick talk about where I'm going and why exactly I'm doing this. Where I'll be going is Snowdonia National Park. It's in the north of Wales and it's a beautiful, beautiful place to take landscape photos. I've got three or four different routes planned. Which one I'll be taking exactly is totally down to the weather. The weather situation can change quite frequently. And you might be thinking to yourself, is there really a need to, to camp just to do some landscape photography? No, not at all. However, my justification for it is I'm going there purely for the intention of taking some sunset photos from either three quarters of the way up or all the way up the top of a, of a mountain. And the dangerous thing about that is if you don't know the route, like the back of your hand, you run the risk of getting lost at night. Regardless of having a GPS, uh, a map, it still can be really, really risky. So the best thing to do, the best alternative, the safest alternative in my situation is to do a wild camp. It will only be for one night and it will save me having to go down in complete darkness once the sun's gone. So there's where I'm going and, and why exactly I'm doing this. So I'm assuming the majority of you guys watching this video now are here because you're into photography. So let's start off by getting into the camera equipment first, then we'll move on to the camping gear. Let's begin with the bag. Believe it or not, everything you see here on the table will fit inside this bag or attached on the outside somehow. You'll see it later, I'll do a quick time lapse of me sticking everything in at the end. It's a 45 litre backpack, it's the Low Pro Rover 45 LAW. I intend to hopefully put this through its paces over the next week and potentially I'll be doing a review of this in the future so hopefully I'll get a good experience from this one. So the main camera I'll be taking with me is the Canon 700D which I'm actually using to record this video at the moment so for demonstration purposes I've got a Canon 350D here Attached to it is a uh, Canon EFS 55-250 to STM zoom lens. This for me is much, much better for landscape photography than a wide-angle lens. It's quite a misconception that wide-angle lenses are a lot better for landscape photography, so you, can, you, you want to fill the frame with as much as possible. The issue with that is all of your mountains, everything that you intend to, to dramatise, to have as your main subject, will be so far into the distance, it will be pushed right out there. It will be really small, really puny, and it just takes a lot of the drama out of the pictures. So that's where the zoom lens comes in. If you've got a nice foreground, mid-ground, background, and you want to compress that, make it seem really dramatic, enhance the size of the mountains in comparison to your foreground, a zoom lens is exactly what you need. In saying that, I am actually taking my wide angle lens. This is the Canon EFS 10 to 18 wide angle. The reason I'm taking this is if I come across any waterfalls, anything that I'd want to come up close and personal to and get quite a different perspective. Uh, so I'll be using that lens. The third and final lens I'll be taking with me is smack bang in the middle of these two. This is the obviously 10 to 18. This is 18 to 55 and that's the 55 to 250. So I've got a nice focal range from 10 all the way to 250 through all three of these lenses. And I've got the lens hoods for all of these as well. A few of the accessories I'm taking with me, I've got three filters. These filters here, it's a, a circular polarizing filter, a variable ND filter and a 10 stop ND filter. For everything here as well, just a little side note, whatever I can't remember the actual specification or model number for, I'm going to stick a link for everything you see here in the description below. So be sure to check that out if you want to know exactly what any of these bits are here memory card holder and a X-Rite colour checker passport. Normally I'd use this more for portrait photography, however you can use it to white balance your landscapes as well. So I may be using this, it really just depends on the situation. Shutter release, if I intend to do some long exposures with the uh, 10 stop ND filter, that can that's, that's quite handy. Uh, some spare batteries, some step up rings, my wide angle lens uh, has a thread of 67 which match the same thread of my filters. This is a, these are step up rings for my other two lenses. Uh, this is a Manfrotto travel tripod. It's, it's an aluminium tripod, it's not carbon fibre. However, it is only about 1.2, 1.3 kilos and it should do the trick. So, condensation, moisture, 
terrible for electronics, especially camera gear, which is why I always make a habit to bring a couple of these with me. These are just silica gels. You normally get them packaged with anything, any electronics you buy new. You can actually buy them in bulk. They don't cost a lot. It's always good to chuck a few of these in, especially if you're doing a hike with your camera gear, intending to stay overnight. It just helps absorb some of the extra moisture, prevents it from getting all over your lenses and inside your camera equipment. I do have this Joby Gorilla tripod. This will be coming with me purely for the action camera that will be coming with me. Now this is the Xiaomi Yi action camera. It's a very, very, very good action camera, especially for the price. Subscribe if you want to see a review of this. The reason I'm taking this with me is to hopefully get some really nice footage for a review that I'll be doing. For the accessories for that action camera, I'll be taking this waterproof housing, uh, this tripod as I mentioned earlier. I've got a few spare batteries here, charging cable, this chest mount and also this head mount. So that's that, we can move on to the camping equipment and all of the other clothes that I'll be taking with me. We'll start off with the tents. This is a Van Gogh Banshee 200. It's an excellent one person tent. It's advertised to fit two people, but I really wouldn't put two people in here, especially if they've got bags with them. One person is excellent. Some dry bags, different sizes, different colors. I'll be using these mainly for all of my electricals that I don't use regularly and uh, my sleeping bag. This sleeping bag is from Alp Kit. It's a, I believe it's a British brand. PD400, it says there, that stands for Pipe Dream 400. It's their down sleeping bag. It's extremely lightweight. It's a bit pricey. However, this weighs 790 grams. It's compact. And the comparison between this and the synthetic alternative is huge. So much bigger, so much heavier. 790 grams. This one is 1.3 kilos. So almost twice the weight and probably twice the volume as well. And that's compressed down as much as it can go. Inside here as well, I have a Rab 100% silk sleeping bag liner just to keep it clean and also add a few more degrees as well. So this will actually be comfortable down to minus six. Whereas this, that synthetic alternative will be comfortable down to about minus two. Sleeping mat, this one's from Thermarest. It's a Thermarest X Therm. It's a really good sleeping mat, really comfortable, uh, worth its weight in gold. Uh, the reviews of it, you can see them all over the internet. If you haven't heard about it already, these are excellent. Also inside here, I have a Mammut pillow, a really good pillow. Now some of the clothes I'll be taking with me. I've got some seal skin gloves, really durable. They're warm, they're waterproof, they're windproof, they're lightweight as well, so they'll be definitely coming with me. Some thermals, some extra socks, some underwear, hats scarf, things to keep me warm. During the night, if it gets really, really cold, I've got here something that a good friend of mine lent to me. It's a snug pack. It's a snug pack insulated jacket. It's synthetic, so it won't compress and it's not as lightweight as something made uh, with down insulation. However, it's, it's not exactly heavy. I've been told it's very warm and all of the reviews of it online suggest that as well. When it comes to waterproofs, I've got my Marmot uh, Gore-Tex lined waterproof jacket and my Berghaus Gore-Tex lined waterproof over trousers. Lastly, we've got a few essentials, some unessentials and some emergency items. I've got my sunglasses here. I've got a head torch, a compass, uh, a few cables for charging, charging my mobile device as well as uh, my camping lights, which we'll get onto. And then this is the emergency backup battery bank. It's a 5200 milliamp battery bank from Rav Power. Small, lightweight, relatively inexpensive and only really used in an emergency. So I think this will charge my phone up one and a half times as well as my camp light as well. This is an excellent little buy. It's a torch. It has the ability to charge your phone up as well. It's got a smallish battery in here. I think it's 800 milliamp. Again, in an emergency, it's also solar powered. It's got quite a small solar panel and with the lack of sun in the UK, I could imagine that can't be too useful, but with whatever sun you do get, if you whack this out, you probably get a few minutes of extra life out of it. The trick behind this is when you pull it, 
that's what happens. It turns into a camping lantern, which you can direct the light that way. You can have it sitting as a, a lantern there. It's got a hook, so you can hook it at the top of your tent. Really looking forward to using this. Bluetooth speaker, not essential, but I can also pick up calls with it. So it saves having to really get my phone out. Seeing as this is waterproof as well, to an extent. So I can leave that attached to the outside of my bag. Earplugs for when it gets really noisy at night, when it's raining, emergency money. Map, something which is lent to me as well by the same guy who lent me the snug pack. He's a really trusting guy. Leatherman. Uh, I believe this is the Leatherman OHT. I'll have to double check that. So this bag here I'll use to put all of my emergency equipment in just to keep them out of the way and keep them all together. Last but not least, I've got my water bladder here and an extra bottle of water there. This water bladder is the Camelback uh, Antidote, the two litre version. This is the biggest water bladder which will fit into my bag here. So. That's two litres of water there and another 500 millilitres of water there. But that's essentially it. The only things that I haven't got here that I'll be taking with me are some toiletries and a small first aid kit. You've probably noticed as well that I haven't got any means of cooking food. I've got no stove, I've got no flameless kit. My idea behind that is as I'm only going for one night and I'll be leaving quite late in the afternoon and coming back quite early in the morning, I'm gonna just be preparing some food, maybe some sandwiches, something like that, take a few snacks with me as well. I've got plenty of room in the top to, to take it all. It saves me having to take extra pots and pans and some cooking equipment. So that's it, that's everything now. All I've got to do is pack it. Cue the time lapse. Also, what I forgot to mention as well, a cleaning cloth for the lenses. Pretty self-explanatory. So that's it. Oh, you don't know how hot it is in here. Oh, it's not easy. Everything is in the bag now or attached to the bag somehow. It wasn't easy, I won't lie. There is always a learning curve getting a new rucksack, knowing how to pack it efficiently. I'll just have to get used to it. I'll have to unpack it and repack it a few times, find what works. But yeah, that is everything. I hope this gives you a better idea as to what I'll be taking with me and hopefully it will inspire you to get out and do the same. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future. Thank you for watching.